Today on the War Boss Fitch channel, we're going to be doing something completely different. I've been seeing people talking about Warhammer the Old World coming out and about how there's lamentations about it. And oh, I can't believe it's going to be another five years. Well, my thought was, we got this. Let's play with this. So, normally, I'm a 40k guy, so this is going to be my first time doing this, and focus. So, what I've done is, over the last week, I've been printing models. So, in a week, I've been able to pull this off. So, no terrain yet, that's coming, but this is going to be a basic figure out what's going on. So, today we've got 5,000 points of Chaos Dwarfs-ish and 5,000-ish points of ogres. Uh, we're going to make sure... We're going to see how the game works. <clears throat> now, there's going to be some few changes. Inches are going to go to centimeters. Um, units are in larger blocks because, you know, just just six ogres on their own, you know, and a, and a, and a game this big just feels weird. So we're going to have larger units. And uh, we're going to see how it works. I've got my little assistant with me. <laughs> and he's got his goldfish in his sippy cup. So, we're going to see how this works. We're going to set it up uh, and, and just go from there. So, here we are set up. <clears throat> this uh, 48 by 24 inch table broken down by centimeters is way too big normally so I've put everything 20 centimeters in and uh, we're gonna go from there so here Evan roll that dice Let's see, he's gonna do the chaos dwarfs get a five and the ogres get a five okay roll it again all right looks like the ogres are gonna go first so opening move for the ogres they move forward and they're gonna fire their guns in here now we need a four up to hit and then the Havoc Dwarves, let me just make sure over here, okay, defense of five with AP one, okay, roll them dice, Evan. All right, Six. we got Two. one save. All right, with five casualties on the shooters, the Dwarf Warriors have decided that they're going to move forward as fast as they can. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> now. Being this small scale, 8 centimeters does not look like very much, but if it's consistent everywhere, it's consistent here, so we're going to see what happens. An ogre unit has moved forward. The lava guys have moved forward. The ogre iron warriors have charged up the middle. Now the big block of berserkers on the flank have moved. It looks like they're going to try to engage the Yeti. The Ogre Heavy Cavalry have wheeled and they're coming over to engage the Bull Centaurs. So the Dwarf Shooters are wheeling to fire at this squad of Ogres here. But hey, we got so many dice, we got some technical difficulties. Stand by. Alright, big hands have taken over. So these shots here looking for fours. Alright, 17 hits, they save on a five. So at the end of that, we have two dead ogres, and one ogre is down to two wounds. And from the way it looks, once I lose a whole whole base, then I'll pull the base. But otherwise, I'll be marking them like this one here. 20 guys in this stack. They have 15 left. One guy left in that stack with two wounds. We're making it work. I've been forgetting sergeants this whole time. So let's do this. Uh, plus one to hit with these guys. These ogres here are going to fire here. They're looking for a three to hit. Now because they're mostly naked berserkers, we're looking for a six to save. So after all the crazy shrapnel shot from the cannons, there are nine dwarfs left in this stack here. But it's a group of 40, so we don't got to worry about a break test yet. Now, our Wounded Shooters Regiment is going to fire at this squad here in the middle of the Iron Blasters. With their Sergeant, they're looking for a three. Now, with their Defense of four and the Guns AP of one, we're looking for a five to save. 
They cause a total of 18 wounds, which means all six of the tough three ogres are gone. Yep. After watching that squad go down, this group of ogres is getting ready to charge right into those guys. Now on this flank, this group of shooters sees the good opportunity to just blast the ogre cavalry. So looking for threes. All right, with our higher natural defenses, which is a three, but the AP of the gun, which is one, we're looking for a four to save. So the shooters caused eight wounds. The, uh, I took away one base because they come in, in bases of two and they only technically had five in that squad. So one base down and one guy on this base is down to four tough remaining. The Ogre's final squad of shooters has moved forward and they're going to fire at this squad here, uh, looking for threes. Now we're looking for fives to save. So that shooting brings this stack of 20 down to 13. So on this flank, the centaurs have charged in, so their impact hits, saving our three. So after taking 12 wounds to the impact hits, now the centaurs get four attacks apiece because they're furious, hitting on threes. Now with AP1, a defensive three, they save on a four. So after all those attacks, they cause a blistering 20 wounds, which means that unit is destroyed and these guys can continue forward three centimeters. After everything else, since there's no more shooting, we just move forward and the battle lines are getting closer to each other. Next turn, we're going to have some more devastating charges. With the Ogre's first charge, this regiment of Ogre's charged into the regiment of shooters. With the sergeant upgrade, looking for a three. Now the shooters have a defense of five and the Ogre's have AP one, so six is to save. We only have six darts left in this unit, so with their sergeant, he's going to say, hey, close combat's probably better, so we're going to hit on a three. With a defense of four and AP nothing, they save on a four. Now they cause four wounds back, but since they took such a beating, do they stick around? Oh man, it looks like they stick around. Now right in the middle of this dwarf regiment is charged into these ogres, getting on a three. But only allowing the first two ranks to attack, which means they only got 20 attacks, but the ogres save on a four. Now, with the ogres attacking back, they hit on a three. Now, because this unit has a abyssal champion with the charge shield rule, they have a shield wall, which makes this go from AP one to AP zero, and then they have regeneration on top of it. So, five up to save, and then five up regeneration. All right, so the morale for this game is interesting. Here, the dwarves cause six wounds. They have three full ranks, one, mu one musician of theirs, and then two battle standers because these two squads are within six centimeters of each other. The ogres cause eight wounds. They have one rank, and they have their own musician and their own standard bearer. So that means 12. To 11. So the dwarves win combat by one and the ogres have to take a test and they fail. So now they are wavering. Now with that ogre unit wavering, that means that it's going to fail a morale test anytime it needs to take one and that the only thing it could do on its activation is to stand still or pivot up to, pivot up to 90 degrees. And then it'll always hit on a six in combat, but because it's already fought this turn, that would happen anyways. Interesting. The next overcharge is going to be the Iron Warriors, Iron Breakers, are charging into this squad here. They're in the middle. Okay, I've already said it. So they're going to hit on a three. Now, even though the dwarves have the shield wall, which means it's AP plus one, their weapons are AP minus two, so the Dwarf Warriors are gonna need to hit on, or save on a six. And their unit leader has the same rule, so they get regen on a five. 
Okay, so the doors are now down to 26 models in that whole regiment. But that's still enough for the front two ranks to get 20 attacks. And the sergeant says, hit on a three. And the Iron Warriors save on a three. So here we go again with the morale. The dwarves cause six wounds, have two full ranks, have three banners nearby, and two musicians nearby. The ogres cause seven wounds, two full ranks, two banners, and one musician. So the final score is dwarves at 13, and the ogres at 12. So the ogres need to make a need to make so at the end of all that the dwarves are at 13 the ogres are 12 so the ogres need to take a test which they pass okay now the berserkers have charged the yetis with the ap1 they need a five to save the yetis are going to attack back looking for a four and the berserkers save looking for a five the yetis definitely lost combat looking for a four and they're sticking around the ogres charge in again, looking for a three. Now this squad does not have the regeneration, but they still have shield wall. So look for a five to save. They take 20 wounds and now they're gonna swing back. And now four up save. After Dorf takes 20 wounds, they're at half. So they definitely lose this round and they're gonna run. The bull centaurs make a move up the rear of the ogres. Seeing the, the centaurs moving up the back, the ogre lead belchers are gonna fire. Then they have a four to save. They only take four wounds. With the abyssal leader's fast, swift flying, he's gonna be able to turn and into these shooters, right into the flank. So unfortunately he's not that cool, he only gets 3 attacks hitting on a 3, and then they save on a 5, oh well 3 wounds to the ogres, and they cannot attack back, so they are, what's the phrase, they are pinned, whatever that is in this game. Now it's time for attacking back, this squad of shooters here is going to pull out their guns point blank and shoot the squad in front of them, looking for a 3. Then the ogres need a five to save. All right, they're down to a single stand. Let's see if they stay. Oh no, they run. Wait, I'm sorry, this is shooting. They don't run, they just become pinned. All right, the last activation of the ogres is the shooters are going to fire into the berserkers looking for a three. Then they save on a six. That finishes removing the full stand of berserkers. Now they're down to 20. They're going to make a test. They're not pinned. So moving around from the dwarf units, the golems move to here, shooter move back, and another shooter brick has moved on to the objective. You can see it just poking out front of their base. The squad of dwarfs in the middle on their activation have pushed back into the iron ogres. They've already fought this turn, so they need a six to hit. Three hits. One wound goes through. The iron ogres attack back, looking for sixes. Three hits, save on sixes, and then regen on a five. We lose two dwarfs. Well, the final score of 10 to seven, the ogres win that combat, and the dwarfs are pinned, or wavering. In the final combat of turn two, the greater golem charges into the ogre regiment. Look for fours, uh oh. One. Wound there, and then we get the ogres attacks. So we're gonna have three ogres attack back, hitting on a six, because they've already fought this turn. Oh, nothing. So the ogres lose combat, but they're fine. So at the end of turn two, the battle lines have hit, and units are starting to evaporate. Moving on to turn three. In the opening move of turn three, the Iron Ogres are trying to crush through these dwarves. So they're going to hit on a three. Their AP, they're going to save on a six. Then regeneration on a five. The only nine dwarves remaining and already 
withering, wavering. That's it, wavering. They're gonna attack back, hitting on a six with nothing. So that means since they're already wavering and they have to take another morale check, they're gonna automatically fail it. So this squad routes. Now the golem unit is smashing the side of these ogres, looking for a four to hit. And the ogres need a five to save. They lose eight wounds, bringing them to exactly half. Are they wavering? Yes, they are now wavering. The ogres push into the giant golem, needing a three. And the golem needs a four to save. With that, it's enough to take down the golem. With the ogres here wavering, these dorms see the opportunity to push right through. They need a three to hit. And the ogres need a four to save. So they've lost some units and they're automatically going to fail the ch fail their uh, wavering check if they don't beat up enough dwarves here to stick around. But since they're wavering, they only hit on sixes. Then fives to save. And then regeneration. So they kill exactly nothing. So, because they have to automatically fail every chest they make, this squad has routed. The Iron Belchers over here are going to take a shot into the side of the Berserkers. And the Berserkers save on a six. Being fearless, they need a three to stay. So they're fine. So they're going to need to do some damage. These shooters down here are going to fire at the Iron Ogres, needing a three to hit. Because of their stone bones, it reduces the AP by one, meaning they save on a three. Just enough to remove one stand of the Iron Ogres. The Yetis charge into the Berserkers. Six is the save. Down to six dwarfs, they fight back. Two hits. One save. Now they've taken so much damage, the Wavering Test. And they're gone. Because the centaurs are just out of charge range, the character is going to charge back in three attacks and completely miss. Okay. With no attacks back because it's on the flank, he just backs up and wonders what happened. These ogres are going to rally and just stand there and get shot. Might as well. The 26 shooters that are left are going to fire and look for the threes. The ogres save on a five. Causing nine bones, which is just enough to take them off the board. The last dwarf activations are just going to be hold the point and move up as far as you can. Well, this squad's going to rally, but they can't shoot anything this turn. So, overview of turn three. Things have changed a lot in one turn. Moving on to turn four, the final. The opening move of turn four, the Iron Ogres smash into the squad next to them. They wheeled sideways and charged. So now hitting on a three. With the extra AP of their great weapons, these dwarves save on a six. Then regenerate on a five. They did 13 wounds, bringing them down to 19 remaining. So they're going to fight back, hitting on a three. And the Iron Ogres save on a three. Will the Ogres win in that combat? Do the dwarfs stick around? They do not. They're out of here. It's a dwarf shooter's turn. They're going to try to blast those Iron Ogres off the objective. So hitting on a three. And saving on a three. That takes them below half. They're fine. Oh, I'm sorry, that doesn't take them below half. Uh, they only started with six stands and they're down to four. My bad. Zooming over here, these ogres have wheeled 90 degrees and charged into the side of the blunderbuss dwarfs. Now they save on a six. When they were charging the flank, they don't get a chance to fight back. Do they stick around? No, they run. Oh, the tides have turned. 
Now with the center objective being the key to victory because the ogres are going to keep this. The dwarves are going to keep this. The golems have charged in. They save on a three. One wound. The iron warriors fight back since they already did. They're hitting on a six. Now the golems have a defense of three, but they're carrying great weapons. AP2 looking for a five. The ogres win combat. But the golems are fine. They just back up a little bit. The centaurs charge into these shooters with impact hits, so we're looking for a four to save. So just the impact hits knocked us down to two wounds remaining on the stand. So before combat even happens, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> and then they'll wheel around this way. And last unit activation, the chaos dwarf lord is going to go here with his three attacks. He hits twice. And one goes through. Now they lose combat. And there are... Huh. I wonder if they can still hold, a, hold an objective. Let's find out. So I looked it up. Wavering units cannot hold an objective. So with the last bomb blast Hail Mary of the game, the Chaos Lord General, or the Chaos Dwarf Lord, wins it. For the chaos dwarfs. Ooh, this is all that's left. So what are my thoughts after my first game of Age of Fantasy Regiments? Well, it almost feels like Warhammer Fantasy that I used to play years and years and years and years and years ago. <clears throat> now with that said, I think some more tweaks I gotta make on my side is unit caps are there for a reason. Like uh, bricks of 40 <laughs> Chaos Dwarf shooters, they're fun. They like to really hurt whatever they get pointed at. But I can see for a balanced perspective why they're there, why they're done that way. So I think going forward, every time I play this, the regiments are going to be base size just a lot more activations on each side. So you're going to hear me saying a whole lot more words. But since you're here still, you're probably not tired of it. I don't know. Why are you listening to me? I have a voice for print. <laughs> but with that said, it was fun. Uh, my little minion has ran off inside. He got bored. But what are you going to do? Um, other than that, this is filmed on Mother's Day. Mom, happy Mother's Day. Everyone say happy Mother's Day to your mothers. And remember, if it's not fun, why are you doing it? <laughs>